<clears throat> Sabbath peace. Peace. Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints that couldn't make it, saints that we don't even know about out there in these streets. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Last week, what we talk about? I think my darn self. <clears throat> Oh, but if you was here, you would get you would have it for me, right? I'm talking about can't do it without you. Last week we was talking about um oh we was talking about Ezekiel, right? We we actually talked about Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how uh King Zedekiah came into power, right? So remember, um you had the uh you had the king of Babylon named Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar he ended up taking over a few things. Right. He moved our king Jehoiachin over and took him into captivity in Babylon. Then after he took him into captivity, he he took uh, Mataniah. Is it Mataniah? Yeah, it was Mataniah. Yeah. Yeah. So he took a man named Mataniah, who was Jehoiachin's <clears throat> uncle. Am I right about that, uncle? Yes, it was his father's brother. Yeah. So it was his uncle. And he made Mataniah king, but then he changed Mataniah's name to Zedekiah, right? So changed his name to Zedekiah. Now Zedekiah is king. Zedekiah as king was warned by Jeremiah. Remember, Jeremiah went to Zedekiah. It was like, yo, 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 this is what you need to do, right? Zedekiah didn't li listen, just like all the king or a lot of the kings before him didn't listen. And then all of a sudden, uh, you have uh, Ezekiel speaking to the folks that are are in the land and telling them how it's going to go down and what, what needs to happen. And you had Jeremiah, he wrote a letter to the people that went into captivity. So you got two prophets, one prophet that's in captivity talking to the people that's in the land. And then you got one prophet that's in the land talking to the people that's in the captivity, right? And that's how the Most High God set it up, right? Jeremiah talking to both, really. But Ezekiel, he talked to both, but he talked mostly to the people that's, that's still in the land. So, um, what you making? So, um, so yeah, that's what we kind of covered last week. We talked a little about a little bit about the letter, a little bit about uh, uh, Ezekiel. What, who remember what Ezekiel had to do? One of the things Ezekiel had to do last week. Then you have to lay on his side. He had to lay on one side or both sides. Both sides, right? One side he had to lay on there for three hundred and ninety days, right? Each day was for a what? Most High God said each day was for a year of sin that they had to bear of the people of Israel. Then on the other side, he had to lay for how many days? Who remembers? 40. Very good. He had to lay for 40 days on his right side. And on his right side, that was one day for a year again. But that was for the house of Judah. Right. That was one day for a year, 40 years of sin that he had to bear for the house of Judah. You remember, he had to kind of craft something that kind of we, we talked about, like it being a poster board, but it had to look like the lamb. It had to look like a wall, a pan against it. And he laid there and set his face against it and all that. And then he had to remember what he had to do to his hair. He had to shave his hair, shave his beard, all that, take the hair. And he divided it into three. Remember, he had to weigh it out in three, three even pieces. Then he had to chop about one, and he had to do what to the next one? <clears throat> Set it on fire. Very good. Set that thing on fire. Then the last one, what did he do? He just scattered it to the wind. Y'all was paying attention. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all paying attention. He scattered that thing to the wind. But then he took like a little bit and then stuffed it in his belt. And then most like God said, yeah, I'm going to get them that you stuff in your belt too. Because that, that represented the people that thought, whew, we made it. We escaped. 
He is like, yeah, when you thought you escaped, I'm going to get y'all butt too. So the prophecy covered everything. That prophecy that we read, that was actually talking about where we are right now, right? Talking about the the the, the hair. It's talking about how we was going to go into captivity after we came back to the land, right? So that's where we are right now um, in that captivity. But um, let's pick it up. Let's go to... Uh, let's do Jeremiah. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's do. Let's go back to Ezekiel. We stopped at Ezekiel five, I think. So let's pick up Ezekiel chapter six. It's Ezekiel chapter six. Give me verse one. Ezekiel chapter six, verse one. And the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying. Son of man, set thy face towards the mountains of Israel and pros prophesy against them. Mm -hmm. And say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yahuwah God. Thus says Yahuwah God to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you and I will destroy your high places and your altars shall be desolate and your images shall be broken and I will cast down your slain men before your idols. And I will lay right, the Right, so he tells them, look, you got this beautiful temple. He said, your altar shall be what? Read it again. What did it say? The altar shall your be al what? Your altar shall be desolate. And your image desolate, be right? So he's letting us know. He's trying to give us a warning of what's about to happen. At this time, although there have been some prophecies that hinted at it or even told us flat out, we don't really realize that our temple is about to be completely destroyed. Like we don't, that hasn't registered to us yet. So he given us hints like your altar going to be desolate. In other words, ain't going to be nothing on that altar. That thing going to be destroyed. Going to be done. Right. So we haven't really captured the idea like, oh, the whole temple going to be gone. Oh, ain't nobody really going to be in the land like that. Oh, this is different. You serious. Right. So he just saying certain things to kind of give us a hint. Keep going. <sighs> And your images shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before your idols. And I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate. And your altars may be laid waste, and may be desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease. Your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and ye shall know that I am Yahuwah. Yet will I leave a remnant that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations when ye shall be scattered through the countries. And they that escape. You shall be what? Scattered through the countries. Right. That's talking about us now. He's in all these different countries. Y'all going to be scattered. Right. I was just telling a young lady earlier today. I was looking like, yeah, you know, you know, while we over here crying about picking a side about Israel and Gaza and all these different people. It's like, man, they've been killing our babies a long time. Right. You hear about where the floods just happen to happen in Brazil. Right. Just happen to happen around our people. Why we ain't got the infrastructure to survive, survive a, a flood. But you look at those people, they look just like us. Even in Palestine, if you go to certain neighborhoods in Palestine, look at these videos they be putting up. These people is our people. They look just like us. And they drop them bombs on them. Right. It's racism. They don't realize it's racism in Palestine. Right. Palestinian is Palestinian black. He called himself a black a Afro Palestinian or a black Palestinian. He said he said we actually the Israelites. He said and the people that the people that's in America, they Israelites, too. Black people in America, he said they Israelites, too. He said he said I'm he said I'm in a tough position. He said in my land, they call me. I forgot, but it's the they version of the N word. Right. They, he said in my land, they call me this. And then when I go over into Jerusalem. They call me the same thing. He like, I can't, it don't matter which side I choose. Don't none of them respect me. They don't respect me in Palestine or not. That's the plight of our people because this is what Ezekiel is prophesying. If Ezekiel is saying, I'm going to scatter you to all these nations and they all going to look at you like this. What happens is we, you know what I'm saying? We live in like big cities here and we think, you know what I'm saying? We'd be thinking, oh, well, no, nah, people, there ain't no oppression. This stuff is over. Racism is done. This, that, another. And we be under that spell and under that impression. Just because, you know, like, you know, I got nice. I got a nice job. Another. 
But you don't realize your butt been conditioned your whole life to to work differently and work harder. You don't realize you think you in the same position as the white folks. Y'all make sometimes you make more money than the white folks, and you think in your mind, I got a leg up on them. Oh please! And you be looking at them like, I wonder how in the world I'm just trying to make ends meet. I know I make more money than them. I'm just trying to make ends meet. Still, how in the world do they go on seven vacations a year? They got they got two houses, but I make more money than both of them. It's a different ball game. They play they playing with money that just get like Ugh! you know what I'm saying. This type of money, Ugh! there you go. It just get dropped on them like the money that listen. This is this is our this is our mind work, right? We start with nothing. May some of us start with debt. We hit the ground with debt, right? That's what we inherit from our parents. Right. Like, yeah, you get it. I'm gonna leave the house to you. You get the house after your parent die or something like that. You get the house and you realize it's debt. You owe. you got to lean on that. thing. all type of stuff you got to take care of. You got to you got to take out loans to repair things in the house. Right. So that's what that's the type of sometimes we don't inherit nothing. And sometimes we inherit something and we thought it was something, but it's really debt. Right. It's really a burden. Right. So then that's that's our situation. Right. So we go. We ain't got nothing. We try to figure it out, but we get a job or we go to college. But college for us is a different level of stress because college for us is, well, I really don't have the money to be doing that. And then I've never really had money all my life. So even if I do come up with the money to do that, I kind of have a lot of other things I want to do with money that I've never had. For white folks, it's a different situation. Not only is the money saved up for them to go to the college, right? But at the same time, right, they also have had money in their life. So it's different things that they've experienced. They can got silly stuff out of their system at a young age. Us, we looking like, my mama never bought me that. You know what I'm saying? So them things come out, it's like, so that's why they make fun of black people when they be looking at it. It's like, oh, no, don't give black people no money. They're just going to buy Jordans. Well, is that really true? Or is it that we just really ain't had nothing? So the same stuff that the little kid did. When they were six, seven years old and they had this money, they did. They splurged into six and seven. We had to wait until we 18, until we got into the streets and start getting a little bit of money. We had to wait a long time to get out this little splurging that you've been doing in pieces all your life. We've been holding on to ours, so we do it all at once. That's oppression. We don't see it. We think, oh, okay, because black people got it. No, that is oppression. All that is oppression, right? All this stuff is stuff that we deal with. If I got money, money. I got, I can buy three, four, five houses, but then I go to go put my money on the house and this person look at the offers, right? And then he say, hmm, do I want to take this to the owner? It's the realtor doing this. The realtor look at the offers. I met this person, met this person, this person. He's white. Do I want to take this one to him? I'm going to leave this one off and I'm going to go take this one. Why do you think we lose so many bidding wars? We put them in there. We putting our bids in like this. I, we put a bid in when we were buying this house. When we were looking for a house, we put a bid in with a black dude. I met him face to face. I'm looking like, man, yeah, this, that, and other, man. Look, bro, you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm going to put it in for this. We're going to do this, that, and the other, da, da, da. I know I had a, we talking about God. I know we had a good conversation. I was like, man, I don't even care about this house no more. Just come to the Bible study. We, let's chop it up. This, that, and other, right? Man told me he never saw the offer. The realtor just chose one and he went with it. I said, hmm. Then I heard learn some other stuff afterwards. And I'm like, that man never saw the offer for a reason. And he a black dude. He was a black dude selling the house. But the realtor gets to look at this and choose and say, you know what? All these are equal offers. I'm going to present the one that I want to present. And you get done. That is oppression. And that happens to us. In big cities. So the oppression is just hidden a little bit. Right. But that's where we are in all these countries. There's a lot of people that look and they like, man, I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to go there. The prophecy tell us no matter what country you go to, that's where the most high God sent you to deal with the same punishment. You got to understand if we don't serve God, he going to make us serve these folks. And the cold part is we'll serve these people and be oppressed by these people and convince ourselves that we not oppress and be happy about it. Meanwhile, we mumbling and grumbling about serving the most high God. It's a sickness that these people got in our brains.
We think it we think it ain't cool to serve the most high God. That's crazy to me. But that's how it go. Right? That's the lifestyle. That's the mind. That's the way our minds be twisted. Ain't nothing in this book wrong. Right? But they'll make y'all think that I'm the bad guy. Oh, that's this guy's crazy. This guy crazy. Ain't nothing in this book wrong. What I'm crazy about, because I'm telling people, don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. Because I'm telling people, I'm telling you, don't cuss, don't steal. Don't kill nobody. Right? You know what? Be honest. Just stop me when I start being crazy. Don't drink. Get married before you have sex. When I start being crazy, I mean, just whenever it get crazy, you just be like, no, don't dress like a woman and you a man. That's the deal breaker. That's what they say. Ah! No, no, it's a social construct being a woman. People have lost their darn minds. A social construct. I'll put on some construction boots and stomp you in the darn ground for saying some silly stuff. I don't know what's wrong with these people, right? But that's what Ezekiel is telling us. Ezekiel is trying to let us know that we would be scattered amongst all the people, right? Keep going. What, what else we got? They shall escape of you, shall remember me along, and they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations where they shall be carried captive because I am broken with their whorish heart, which has departed from me and with their eyes, which go a whoring after their idols. And they shall load themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah and that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. That's right. That's what he's doing. This is this is Yahuwah doing this evil to us. We got to keep that in perspective. It's Yahuwah doing this evil to us. Right? They just they just looked up Navy Federal. Right? Navy Federal. I bank with Navy Federal too. I like them too. Broke my little heart, but they looked up maybe did a little study on Navy Federal. How they wouldn't get no loans to black people. That's oppression. That's here. That's not like that's not like somewhere else. That's not like it's some that it's oppression right here. The the, the thing that these people do Bank of America is they oppress you. Too. What'd you say? The Bank of America got caught doing that a while ago too. And and oh, oh, oh listen. Don't give me listen, don't get me started with all these bang. I'll list them all. I got to go meet them next month, so I can't talk too crazy. You know what I'm saying? I got to sit in their face, face next month. Next month, they're going to be sitting in front of me like, oh, yeah, so what have you experienced at credit or wherever you at? You know what I'm talking about? They be like, well, you know what I'm saying? What, what have you experienced? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be sitting there like, uh, well, Johnny, let me tell you, right? Because, you know what I'm saying? But all these people, they oppress us. These, all these, listen, you have, um, you have not just Navy, Navy, uh, Navy Federal. You also have Bank of America, right? You have, you have, you remember, remember we read about Laban, Laban and uh, Jacob. I just reread it, right? Laban and Jacob. You remember it? Jacob's, his complaint with, against Laban was what? Who remembers what his complaint was? You changed my wages 10 times. He, he said, you this. changed my wages 10 times. In other words, you changed what was supposed to be exchanged for my service. 10 times what I was supposed to get in exchange for doing work for you. You changed it 10 times. And that's what happens with us. Right. We come over here. They whip us on our backs. <clears throat> knows what they telling us why they doing that. Right. Then they tell us, you know what? Y'all free. And guess what? For two additional years, they still whipping us on our backs. And so now everybody gets the message that we free. Okay, cool. We free. Now they won't loan us anything. They won't. They giving away free stuff to white folks that's immigrating from all these other countries. They won't let us get anything. When they told us that we were supposed to get the land that they were giving to these white folks was supposed to go to us. Y'all heard of 40 acres in the mill, mule, right? That was supposed to go to the free slaves. At the same time that they promised us that and never gave it to us, they giving away free land or land for nothing, like a dollar, big pieces of land for a dollar, which is how all these big companies have a leg up on us right now, right? Then after that, a while go by, we start getting in there and you, we had like the Black Renaissance and we had Harlem and we have, uh, uh, what's the other place down south? Tulsa. Tulsa and all these, all these places, a couple of these places around the country where black people doing well. Then they bomb us. 
They kill a whole bunch of people on Harlem and New York and they bury them under the ground and then build buildings on top of their butt. Right? Then after that, we say, you know what? Martin Luther King, we gonna fight. Malcolm X, we gonna fight. Uh, Carmichael. So what's his name? Stokely Carmichael, we gonna fight. You know what I'm saying? All these boys, we fighting. Black Panthers, everybody, we fighting, right? Then they came out, they kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they like, you know what? That was messed up. Let's, peel, let's pass what? Civil rights, right? 1964 or 5, 4, I think, right? What happened the very next year? They passed something called immigra the Immigration Act. All of a sudden, after black folk finally got civil rights, they felt, you know what? Let's let all the immigrants in. They opened up the floodgates, right? So immigrants start coming in. Do we think that's accident? No, it's not accident. All it is is that saying, yeah. okay, we'll let you get jobs. We'll let you do this. We'll let you do that, right? But we're going to let a whole bunch of other people come and compete. Because that competition is oppression. So now, if you look at politics, you look at anything. What happened when, when a bunch of these people stand out and they say Black Lives Matter? What happens? What's the response? All lives matter. All lives matter. So the response to us, Hebrews, right, is always to marginalize us and mix us up with a bunch of others to where what we have don't mean nothing. Always going to be the response. So if Black Lives Matter, no. All lives matter, right? I'm going to mix y'all up with a whole bunch of other people, right? So if you want civil rights, okay, we're going to give civil rights to all these Mexicans and all these Europeans and all these Africans and all these Jamaicans and all the, anybody who can come over, come on over. We're going to give you the same civil rights. Okay. You want affirmative action, right? So that means when I apply for a job, because everybody knows historically for black people, it has been difficult to get jobs because white people who control everything will either lean on other black people and say, you bet not hire other black people, right? Or they'll lean on other people and say, don't hire black people, right? So then when we go and we put in our application and we put it in, they look at us and they be like, I want you. So they ignore our application, right? So you know what they did? They came up with something called affirmative action because of us, because we fought the power and we said, we want to be treated equally in this country. So they recognized that they messed up. They said, you're right. Let's put affirmative action where now we recognize that when black people get hired, we count that and we promote that, right? So then what they did is they expanded affirmative action to include everybody. It ain't just about black people. I mean, because Mexicans also. And women, women had it hard in this country. They couldn't vote either at one point, right? So then you put it all together and now affirmative action ain't got nothing to do with black people. So now you'll see every single time it, may, it looked like something is being done for us, at the same time, something is being taken away because they change our wages 10 times. That is oppression. That's just here, though, right? Because a lot of people will have y'all believe you're not oppressed because Y'all live in a rich country. Are you not oppressed because you got money and you eat every day or you do this, this, that, and another? But that's not what oppression is. Oppression is being able to control you, right? And we were oppressed in, in, in what we're talking about now in the captivity. If you listen to the captivity that's being described, what did, what did Jeremiah write in the letter? This is captivity that we went into. But remember, he wrote in the letter, go ahead, build y'all houses, marry, and give y'all children in the marriage. And pray for the peace of the people. If oppression is just being whipped on the back and being a slave, then how is that captivity there? Right? That's not the definition. When these people control you and benefit from you and 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 and, and make you feel less than, that is oppression. They're disparaging you, uh, us. You can see all of the black celebrities being oppressed all the time. They oppressed too. Yeah. You think these boy? Okay. What's the richest black celebrity? Jay Z, Byron. Oprah Winfrey, Byron. right? Byron something. Byron Allen. Yeah. How they get their money? What's the? Oh no! Before we say that, what's the richest? Who's the richest man ever? Elon Musk, right now. Yep. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. Okay. So now let's look at how they got their money first. Right. Bill Gates. What did he do? 
You don't know? Who knows? You got like a you loan from dad or something like that? Microsoft. Microsoft, right? Bill Gates put together Microsoft, right? Then who else we say? E Elon Musk? What did Elon Musk do? Tesla, he, yeah, he, he, he jumped into Tesla. He did a few other things before that, but he jumped into Tesla, came up with some, some pretty good ideas. But Tesla was already a company. He jumped into it, came up with some good ideas. But I think his start was actually PayPal, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So I think he I think he worked with PayPal. They came up with PayPal. He jumped into Tesla, jumped into he jumped into a lot of business. So he jumped into uh, space. What's it called? SpaceX. And then he bought Twitter and then he got a couple other big businesses, whatever. Right. So Elon Musk. Who else? Who's the other one? Jeff Bezos. Right. His claim to fame was Amazon. I don't know what he did before that, but certainly what would make him the claim of the, you know, the, the guy is Amazon. Huge companies. Right. All different types of stuff that they into. Right. Let's think about our black billionaires, right? So we said Oprah. Oprah, what? Did, how did Oprah get her money? Acting, I don't know. Entertainment, right? She bought networks, right? Movies, entertainment, right? Jay Z, how Jay Z get his money? Entertainment, but how he really get the money? Like how he like? Woo! I got like okay, like for sure. He came doing stuff in the street. He exchanged that money, wash it, do what he got to do. He buy a record company, right? But where the money, money come from? Because it's not from selling records, huh? Before, before rap, is what he say. I don't know nothing about these people, but you know that's what they say, right? But you know what I'm saying. You he get on. He he got a company. He start selling clothes, right? Sell clothes, rockerware, all that. Then he sell rockerware. Then he turn that into something else and then sell that. Then he gets what really get him there. He gets alcohol. He gets an alcohol brand. Right? So now he sell alcohol to the people. Right? Who else? So Jay-Z got alcohol. LeBron James. LeBron, that's a good one. LeBron James, where he get his money from? Basketball, another one, entertainment. So far, we got all, all three of our, our black billionaires, entertainment, right? But then, LeBron James, most of his money came from entertainment. That's a fact. But guess what LeBron James, what type of deal he got? What type of, what else he own? Alcohol. He don't own the shoes. He got a deal with Nike, but he don't own the shoes. You know what he do own? Alcohol. So now... Of the three black billionaires that we talking about, all of them got their money from entertainment, right? And two of the three also have alcohol deals. Rihanna, another billionaire, alcohol and entertainment, and then she ventured out into clothes. Puff Daddy, alcohol. Puff Daddy, clothes, entertainment, alcohol. Kanye, Kanye a little different, but at the end of the day, Kanye, entertainment, and clothes. Give me one black billionaire that got money from sudden something other than TV, entertainment, sports. Not going to happen. That is oppression. Why, why when we watch black news stations, I mean, not news stations, black, uh, black entertainment, right? We might listen to, anybody listen to podcasts or watch, uh, you know, black shows like on YouTube or anything like that. Look at the ads. Remember, when they doing podcasts and, and, and shows online and all that, they're getting money. The way they get paid is through the ads, right? They get paid because somebody say, yo, Jaden, I like what you're doing on the show. Can you tell me how many people subscribe to your channel? And you're going to tell me, like, man, listen, every month I get 100,000 people coming by here and putting their eyeballs on what? 100,000. So they licking their chops. They said, you get 100,000? Well, tell me more about that 100,000 people. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're going to say words like demographic. What's the demographic? You ain't going to know what that mean at first. You're going to be looking like, graphic? Yeah, I ain't even really, I, ain't, I didn't go to IT. I don't even do graphics. They'll be like, no, 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 no. You know, what type of people are they? Then they're going to they gonna try to slide it under you at first. They're going to be like, you know, like the age group. They, ain't, they don't care nothing about the age group, right? <laughs> you can be like, oh, well, you know, most of the people, they, you know, they 24 to, you know what I'm saying, let's say, yo, you know what I'm saying, they, they 13 to, to, to 23. You know what I'm saying? 13 to 23 is most of my audience. 
And be like, oh, okay. Is it the urban crowd? This is what they're going to say. They don't want to say black people. They say urban crowd, right? Yeah. Then you'll be like, oh, yeah. We're going to use words like for sure. You know what I'm saying? They're going to love that. They're going to say it back to you. Yeah, for, sh for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Then they're going to say, I have just the thing for you. Let's sell them prize picks or uh, what's the one? What's the one that Cam got? Underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy or uh, uh, DraftKings, right? All these companies that's gambling. Notice if you pay attention to the people that look like us, that got TV shows and that got uh, got uh, uh, TV shows, got podcasts, got YouTube channels, and look at the advertisements that's on their channels. It's gonna be gambling. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be alcohol, or it's gonna be some foolishness. That is oppression. That is oppression, right? Is there one black news station? Just completely black news station. Is there one Mexican news station? Yeah. Plenty. Who been here long? Who been here longer than black folk? Huh? The black black folk? Ain't nobody been here longer than us except for the Native Americans. Except for the Native And what the Native Americans? Do they have, have their own news station? They definitely got their own. Now they got their news station. They got their reservations. They got their own police squad. They, they got, got it made. Them people are set. They got their I ain't saying they ain't going through nothing. Don't get me wrong. Now. I ain't saying that they ain't going through nothing. The but they looking pretty. Every time we try to split off and get our own little thing, guess what? That ain't happening. Shut that thing right on down. Right? There's a reason for this. This is oppression. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you got Obama like, was the president and he was black, right? Devil. Who believe Obama was black? He's black, right? Dang. Guess what Obama could have done at any point? The U.S. government got a budget specifically for advertisements. So, like, if you ever, if you ever watch, like, an NFL game and they show, like, on the commercial, they show Land of the Brave, the home of the free, join the U.S. military, right? That is an advertisement. Who pays for it? If you see a Nike commercial, who pay for that? Nike pay for it, right? So who you think is paying for the U.S. government, Army, or Navy, or Marine uh, commercials? Government. Who run it? U.S. government is run by the president. The president, there are certain things that the president got to go and he got to deal with the Republicans and deal with the Democrats and get them to agree. And they vote and everybody agrees and we pass a bill, right? But there's some, some stuff that the president could just do and he ain't got to talk to nobody. And one of those things is the advertisement budget. At any point, Obama can say, to help increase the knowledge and the effectiveness of black people, I am dedicating 50% of the U.S. government budget to black children or to black channels or to black podcasts or to black whatever, right? That that uphold these values, right? It could be anything, right? I want to make sure you spread positivity or whatever. At any point, he could have said, okay, I'm taking this billions and billions of dollars in, 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 in funding and I'm going to plug it in to black uh, media. And then guess what we would have overnight? We would have a media. That we could stand on our own, that we could take the money he got us, flip it, we'll turn it into something else, we'll get other advertisement, we'd be respected, we ain't got to sell our soul, we ain't got to sell ourselves to do nothing because the government is feeding us by our black president. Guess what? He never even acted like he was. What I just said. That is oppression. And you can look at it two ways. One, he ain't us. All right. He black, true. He is not a Hebrew. He is not an Israelite. He is not a descendant of American slaves. Right. He is a descendant of one of them Africans over there. So he don't see it. He came over here. His people came over here. He got a white mama. He got an inheritance of like fifty thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, not fifty, five hundred thousand dollars. Like his life, he don't have our experience. His life is very different from ours. Right? He had more of a white experience and an immigrant experience. But at the same time, if he did identify with us, why wouldn't something like that happen? Because that's oppression. Some people will say, 
man, if, if Obama tried to do something like that, they might kill him. That's oppression there. We can't have it both ways. If, if we don't feel comfortable making a decision for the betterment of our people because our own life is going to be taken, that's oppression. Steve Harvey is talking to uh, Monique. You know what I'm saying? Monique, the comedian. He's talking about how uh, Hollywood uh, and the actors don't treat her right. Ain't nobody paying her. They trying to steal all this stuff, right? And she, tell, she said, Steve Harvey, she is like, I just need somebody to stand with me and stuff because you know that they be messed up. And you didn't speak up. And Steve Harvey was like, listen, I got a job. I got all this stuff going on. I got a family to take care of. I ain't about to speak up and put that all at risk. Sometimes you got to make a choice. That is oppression. If my man don't feel like he could speak up for somebody he, who he acknowledging face to face on national television, he acknowledging, yeah, you went through all that stuff. And yeah, what you were saying was right. I just couldn't speak up at the time because I would threaten what I have. That is oppression. And that's a weak man, by the way. That's a sorry, weak man. But that is also oppression to make a weak man feel like that. Right? These are the things like we have to, we can't let these people play around in our brains because that's what they do. Constantly, that's what's happening to all of us. We sit around, we go into school and they're teaching us stuff. We, 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 we go to work and they influence us to do stuff. We out playing with our friends. They influence us, influence us to do stuff. The whole world is playing with our brain. We watching TV, we listening to podcasts, we laughing, we joking, all this stuff. And this stuff is just playing in our brain, making us think differently, think in ways that's not logical, that don't make no sense to the point where anybody can tell us anything. You can't tell me anything. Can't anybody tell me anything because I didn't wash my brain with this word. I've looked at this word. I've told myself this word is absolutely true. And I don't care who think I'm stupid for saying it. And guess what? Can't nobody walk up and tell me just anything. It can't happen. It can't happen. I'm not going for it. It got to line up with the book for it to make sense to me. And if what you're saying don't line up with the book, guess what? I don't care anyway. I don't care nothing about what you're talking about. We be thinking we losing something when we don't care what people are talking about. But no, I, I think I just need to care because, because they really care. When she was talking to me about that transgender stuff, what I say? Why? Why are you? Why does that? I say, if I say, what I say? Tranny stuff or tranny, tranny thing? I said tranny thing. I called it, I called it a tranny thing. That's a tranny thing. Right? She's like, oh, I, can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe you say something there. So I said, oh, well, you, I was like, well, you familiar with them then? You know, they use a word called cis. They might call me a cis man. A cis man, what they say cis, basically they saying a normal, a normal man. Right, a normal man, a cis man. I ain't never heard the word cis in my darn life. Right? So he said, I'm gonna call you a cis man. I said, so when you hanging out with the tranny things and they call they get to use it and say that's a cis man or a cis woman, do you do you perk up and like, oh, I can't believe you said cis? Because I take that offensive. I'm just a man. I ain't no cis man. You trying to call me a sissy? I'm a I'm a regular man. Not no, not no cis man, a regular man. That's a regular woman. Not no cis. Don't call my wife no cis woman. That's a regular woman. Just woman. That's it. Right? So if I take cis disrespectfully, I ask her, I'm like, when your tranny thing friends is saying cis around you, now that I've told you that this is disrespectful and I don't like it and I'm offended by it, will you treat them the same way? No, no, no don't say that. Real men are offended by that. Now you can't say that to them because guess what? They're going to be like, real men? Are you suggesting I'm not a real woman? It puts you in a predicament because now you got to tell the truth. Be like, well, come on. We, know, we all know. I support, no, look, I support your fight, but you can't have it all now. <laughs> so don't be ridiculous. Right? Now you caught in the tough spot because it's bully ball. It ain't based off of logic. It's based off of emotion. It's based off of how can I make you and manipulate you in the fighting for my cause for me? I asked her, I was like, how many, how many trans people do you think is in the world? He thought it was 48%. That's what they got us believing, that half of the people in the world is trans. But you would think that the way it's represented, the way it's represented, the way it's a conversation, the way everybody talk about the thing, the way, the way you get 
shout it down if you say anything against it. You would think that half of the world, you would think that the world is split on this. That is not. They did a study in UK and that thing was like, you remember what I told you? I can't remember what the number was. Mm. It was like 1% or 2% or something low. That thing was low, whatever it was. Right? This looking like, so you mean to tell me these little couple people is moving the whole world? Okay, got it. Won't be me. Won't be me. Y'all ain't playing that voodoo on my brain. I know the word. I serve the living God. What are you going to do to me? When you serve the most high God, what is going to happen to me that wasn't supposed to already happen? Tell them boys like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Meshach and Abednego told them. You know what I'm saying? He told, he looked, he said, he said, listen, y'all can throw me in the fire. You know what I'm saying? And my God is able to save me. But even if you don't, I'm not bowing to the image. Even if he don't, that ain't changed. Like, whether we're not, the conversation is not about what my God is able to do. What it comes down to is what I'm going to do. So even if he don't save me, it don't change what I'm going to do. Because I serve the man to death. I don't serve him because he's going he gonna to save me. I serve him to death. All right, let's keep going. We ain't going to get nowhere with me doing all this talking. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, smite thine hand and stamp with thy foot and say, alas, for the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they, for they shall fall by the sword, by famine and by pestilence. Hmm? He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword. He that remains and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus mm -hmm. will I accomplish my fury upon them. That's then, right. then shall ye know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars, upon every high hill, and all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and on every thick oak, the place where they did other did offer sweet savor to all their idols. So will I stretch out my hand upon them and make their land desolate. Yea more desolate than the wilderness toward Dibla. All their when habitations, it, when, they shall know that I am the Lord. When the Most High God stretch out his arm, what that mean? He want a handshake? He yes, want a sir. hug? What that mean? Punishment. That's, it. That's judgment when the Most High God stretch. It's important because we're going to get to the New Testament, we're going to get to little things, and need Christians to try to twist your brain. You're like, oh, look, his arm stretched out. Like, that's not what you think it means. You know what I'm saying? If you knew the scripture, you would know that's not what you think it mean. Right? When he stretch out that arm, somebody getting a whooping. All right? Keep going. The heart. When I stretch out my arm, what that mean? Stretch out. Get one of them boys. Bow! You know what I'm talking about? That thing be bow! You know what I'm saying? I get that from God. Keep going. Uh, chapter 7. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 7. Give me verse 1. Moreover, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus says Yahuwah God unto the land of Israel, and end, the end is come upon their four, upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abomination. And my eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense my ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee. He shall know that I am Yahuwah. Thus says you who are God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come. The end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwell in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not and not and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah that smiteth. Behold, the day, behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod has bloomed, blossomed. Pride has budded. Violence has risen up into the rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time has come, the day draws near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. 
for the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity in his, of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that, that be? escape of them shall escape. Why would it be that he that is in the field will die with the sword, and he that is within would die of pestilence? Because they're being besieged. Because they are being besieged, right? Remember we talked about when Assyria surrounded us, and they surrounded everything, and they had hidden down our walls, and they wouldn't let no food in and no food out? Anybody who was outside them walls, the Assyrians killed their butt. If you was inside the walls, then you die because you die of famine and sickness. You can't get outside the walls to get medicine. You can't get outside the walls to get food, right? So you die on the inside from pestilence, and on the outside, you die from the sword, right? So he's he's telling the most high God, he's not telling you flat out, yo, you're about to be besieged. That's not what he's saying right here. He's just describing it. And this is a prophecy. So you got somebody just yelling this stuff out in broad daylight, probably look like this man laying on his darn side for a year, almost a year and a half laying on his darn side. You look at him like, man, this darn coop. There's something wrong with this man. And he just yelling it. This, that, and the other. And you look, man, that's, that's just Ezekiel. He's been talking this stuff almost. I'm telling you, it's almost been a year and a half. He's been telling us all this stuff is going to happen. And this P our people still in Israel right now. He, he swear, he's talking about Babylon is done with us. They already got, they took us captive. They're going to leave the rest of them alone. Right? And they mind that's what they're thinking. Like, they already did what they're going to do. Ain't nothing else going to happen. He's been laying on for a year just talking. You don't think nothing of it. Right? And meanwhile, he trying to tell you, about to be besieged. These people about to be besieged. Keep going. Watch this. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, everyone for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall, they shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he said in his he said in he said it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them, and I will give it unto the I will give it into the hands of the strangers for prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face right? will I turn. But what is he talking about? He said the beauty of his ornament. He talking about the temple. Right? He's not telling them flat out, your temple about to be destroyed. Right? He's not telling them flat out. He just telling them the beauty of his ornament. I gave it to him now. Right? And they disrespected it. So now I'm about to give it in the hands for the enemy for a prey. In other words, for the enemy to take from him. And he said he they going to do what to it? And I will give it to the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked to, of the earth for a spoil. And they What shall they going to do to it though? Pollute it. They going to pollute it. Right? What in the world could they be talking about? Would he be talking about an ornament that's going to be polluted? He talking about the temple. But we know ain't no stranger supposed to be touching the temple. Watch. You'll see. Keep going. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. For the robbers mm -hmm. shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction the worst of the heathen shall possess our houses. That's what the book said. Right? Keep going. Destruction comes, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet. But the law shall perish from the priest, the counsel from the ancients, 
The king shall mourn and the prince shall be clothed with desolation and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way and according to their des deserts, according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Keep going. It's chapter eight. Yeah. It's Ezekiel chapter eight, verse one. Got to pay attention to this one because it's going to set up the whole scene in chapter nine. And it shall come to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me. Look, the elders the of Judah sat before. So he's sitting in his house, right? And the elders of Judah sat before him. These are elders of Judah. So these are the leaders of our people, right? Keep going. Watch this. That's right, Sister Pamela. A lot of the prophecy that we're going to read not only applies. It, so it, it could be applicable to them, right? Some of it can be a still applicable to them, but it's really talking about us. A lot of this stuff is really talking about us. It's still applicable to them, though. And it shall come to pass in the sixth year and the sixth month and the fifth day of the month. And it came to pass. I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me, fell there upon me. Then I beheld and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins, even downward fire. And from his loins, even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head and the spirit lifted took me by what the lock of my head right he had locks right so the most high god took a form of a hand and grabbed him by one of his locks watch this and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of god to jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looks toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoked to jealousy Behold, right. So then it was an image of jealousy that provoked Yah to jealousy. Right. Keep going. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way towards the north. So I lift up my eyes the way towards the north and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy is the, in the entry. He said, furthermore, unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel commits there, committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination. So he looked to the north, and then he saw the image of jealousy. He said, but look, turn again, I'm going to show you something even worse than that. Watch this. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said, unto right. Me, Remember, the vision took him to Drew. So let me make sure y'all understand the scene, right? This is the scene. He's sitting there. He with the elders of our people, right? He's the leaders of our people, right? Chilling. All of a sudden, the hand of the most high God come over him, he said. And after that, he start having a vision. And he sees similar, he sees something similar to what we already remember. Remember when you had the you had the 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 cherubim, you know what I'm saying? They had the wings and they was all moving in unison, and you had that wheel, and it looked like it had eyes all the way around it, and all of it was just moving together. And then you look above them, and it's like this little crystal thing, you could see through it, and it's like, what's the world? And then you could see a man sitting on the throne, and the throne was like fire and all that. So he saw some of that again, not the things moving, but he saw the throne and the fire. He is like, Man, it was just like what I saw before. Then he said something in the form of a hand. It was just like a hand. It came and it grabbed me by my lock. And then it held me up and I was in between the heavens, the sky and the ground. In other words, I'm floating off of the ground. Then all of a sudden I got moved to Jerusalem. So now he it's like he teleported or he get drug over real quick over into Jerusalem. So he having a vision. He's sitting there. Whoa, what in the world is that? Oh, there go that man again sitting on the throne. Then a hand grab him. Then, whoa, 
I'm like, he start floating in the air. And all of a sudden, whoa, I'm in Jerusalem. Then he look in Jerusalem. Then he say, look to the north. So he's in Jerusalem by the temple. He looked to the north, to the north end of the temple. And he see these people, they got the, the image of jealousy that they worship. Right. In other words, they worshiping another God, pretending like they serving God. Right. Then the next thing he said, but look over here, it's a hole in the wall. Let's see what's in the hole in the wall. He, remember, this is Jerusalem talking about the temple. This is our this is like where everything is for our city This is the most holy city in the world for us. And we got our temple in this place. He's showing them stuff right by this temple. Watch this. And he said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do there. So I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Right. So then they had in this secret room, he put a, it was a hole in the wall. He said, look through it in this secret room. They had every unclean animal, every creeping thing, every bug, in other words. Right. All these bugs and then all the idols of the house of Israel. So you remember we had the golden calves. We had the, the ephod that was in uh, that we that we started to serve. So all the idols that we read about up to this point that the children of Israel and the house of Israel serve. Now we're in Judah in this room, this all over the wall. So somebody had this secret room that they set up all this stuff that they thought, you know what I'm saying? Didn't nobody know about. And the most high God showed it to Ezekiel, right? Keep going. Watch this. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his, of his imagery. For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord has forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again. Hey, hold on. Sorry, I don't want to gloss over that too quick. He said, They said, What? The house of Israel, what they do in the dark, every man in his chambers and his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not. He the said, Lord they say, Lord. the Lord, Yahuwah, seeth us not. In other words, Yahuwah don't see us. What has he done? What did they accuse him of? He has forsaken the earth. He has forsaken the earth. So in their mind, God used to be here. He's no longer here. Does that sound familiar? It's a lot of people that used to be Christians and used to be religious and used to believe this and used to believe that. Be like, no, nah, I don't believe that stuff no more. That's what they are. They stop believing in the most high God. They start feeling like, man, ain't nothing happening. We heard, we heard all these stories about how God did these miracles and yeah, Moses split the Red Sea. I know, I know. Walked through the wilderness. I know, I know, I know. We heard all these stories. That's how they're looking at. We heard all these stories, but ain't nothing happening. There's nothing going on. I don't think it's real. I watched a movie called The Book of Clarence. And there's a lot of people, it's a lot of people that didn't like the movie because they were saying, you know what I'm saying? They made they made the main character of the Book of Clarence an atheist. And he was he is supposedly living around the same time uh, of Yahushua. But you know, you got this movie where it paints all the people in the in the in the Bible or the, what's described in the Bible as black people, right? You know what I'm saying? And so you got these people and they walking around, it's all black people, and they made Yahushua black and everything black, right? All the Israelites black. And then this main character is an atheist. He don't believe in God. He think all this stuff is mess. You know what I'm saying? He don't believe none of it. And a lot of the criticism from Christian was, no. That's not his story. That wouldn't any, be anywhere near historically accurate. Even if the people of Judah were, were disobedient to God, they all believed in him. These people don't know scripture. That is not true. This is what they're saying right now. Yahuwah is not here. He's forsaken the earth. Yahuwah ain't real is what they're saying. He's not here. Right? He don't see nothing. Now, what they do, what, you, what Yahuwah is showing Ezekiel is that these are the same elders that walk around. Remember, this started off with him sitting in front of elders. Now he got zipped over to see what they do behind closed doors. 
right? So in reality, he's sitting right in front of these boys. Then the Most High God gave him a vision, showing him everything these boys do behind closed doors, right? So we think these people serve God and these people believe God and these people do all these things behind closed doors. These people don't believe a word of it. Matter of fact, that's what that movie was about. Uh, he was pretending, you know what I'm saying, to be a, a, a he was pretending to be the Messiah, but behind closed doors didn't believe none of it. He's just doing it for a money play and to get respect and all this stuff. Right? And that's how it works. That's what these folks are doing that, that Ezekiel is showing you. So it's like, yeah, the movie wasn't historically accurate, but not for the reasons that y'all think. Y'all don't know enough about the book to even know where it was wrong at. Right? Keep going. It's a good movie, though. I, I recommend it. Then he brought me to the door, the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Te Tammuz. Then said so he... Tammuz is, a, is another god. Right. So this is a this is a Gentile God. Right. Keep going. Then said he unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn ye yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. And they worship the sun towards the east. Right. Who do that? Who worships towards the east? Is that the Muslims? Muslims, right? Muslims. He said they back was to the temple and they worship the sun towards the east. All right? Ooh. Keep going. Watch this. This is way before Muslims, though. Uh, it's way before. It's way. Okay. If we, we don't have to get it, but if we looked at the Ishmaelites that took Joshua, grabbed him, took Joshua, and um, and uh, took him into captivity into Egypt, right? If we looked at those Ishma Ishmaelites, they had a certain uh, ornament on them. You talking about? And if you look at it, the book in Hebrew is translated as a crescent. You talking about Joseph? What did I say? Joshua. Yeah, Joseph. Excuse me. Right. Talking about jo uh, Joshua. I mean, Joseph. <laughs> Talking about Joseph. Right. They if, if you look at it, it's translated as a crescent. Right. What you, what we see today are Muslims and what's on all their flags and all their symbols. That crescent with a star. Right. So, sure, they call Muslims today, but they religion, they, 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 they religion and ideology ain't new. Right. The only part that's new is that that, you know, Muhammad kind of refreshed it. Kind of turned it into something else. But they'll tell you it's not if you if you really look deep into their stuff, it's not new. They got something called the Dome of the Rock. That didn't get created with when Muslims came around. Right. That represented something much deeper that came on much before them. That crescent comes much before when Muslims were created. All this stuff is it, just an offshoot. It's a clean. It's just like Christianity. Right, Christianity, all it did is clean up a whole bunch of pagan practices and blame that stuff on God. So it's like, oh, now instead of worshiping Ishtar, we're going to call it Easter and we're going to worship Jesus. And instead of worshiping, worshiping the god Saturn, we're going to, and, 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 and doing what's called Saturnalina or whatever it's called. Saturnalia. Saturnalia, whatever that thing is called, right? We're going to call it Christmas and we're going to say it's Jesus Christ, right? So it's like all they did is clean up a whole bunch of all these weird instead of instead of having that the Egyptian water practices, we're going to call it baptizing and dip you three times. And we're going to call that Catholicism Instead of having these bees that come from all these other Gentile religions. We're going to call it the Hail Marys. And we're going to, you know, what I'm saying so they just attach something that got to do with God to it. And they blame this stuff on God. But really, all these practices are from ancient times, from ancient gods that predate any of the stuff that they try to pretend it came from. Same thing with Muslims. Muslims ain't no different. These Muslims, you know what I'm saying? These Muslims be bullying too. They make you feel like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, this is the only one religion. This, that, and other. All Muslim mean to submit to God, brother. Don't you know Jesus was a Muslim? Shut your dog. Shut your dog. Y'all be saying, 
These people talk. I'm telling you, these people will talk to you any kind of way if they think you don't know. You should feel disrespected. When these people get to talking to you, will somebody look at your face and be like, the earth is 7 billion years old. When they get to talking to you like that, like you should feel disrespect. You should feel like, oh, you just think I'm an idiot. You just think, you think I, you think you could just say anything to me and I'm just going to go for it. I see you, Ma. uh, Muhammad, you know what I'm saying? Blessed be he. He's actually the last prophet. Okay, for sure. Usually, I mean, I'm just supposed to take anything you say. I'm just roll with it, huh? I ain't supposed to challenge what this foolishness you're talking about. Muslim will tell you, you know what I'm saying? Well, actually, uh, uh, the, the, the Quran tells you that we call him Isa. That's what they call him, Isa. You know what I'm saying? Jesus didn't die. But the Most High took him off of the cross and saved him right before he died. They, they don't believe in no resurrection. So they got to come up with a story where he didn't die. That's one of the, they's like, oh, no, the New Testament is valid except for a few things. And that's one of the things that he didn't actually die. Saved him before he died. That's how he wasn't resurrected. He just was still alive. Y'all don't. Y'all just want me to believe. And just, just tell me you want me to believe anything. You can't, no, nah, you can't do that. Can't talk to me any kind of way. All right, most I got and exposed me to too much. Right here in this book. It's where it starts to in this book. I don't, I be wanting to remind people that because I'm not a problem. Most I got have never, like, I've never heard a voice ever that I thought was God. Not in my life. Right? I had a couple dreams. That I'm like, whoo, I don't know what that's about. But I also had a couple wild dreams that I know ain't had nothing to do with God. But I ain't never had no dream that I'm like, for sure, God gave me this message and I need to go talk. Never. 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 So not a prophet, no supernatural, never had no, no real life like supernatural, like, ooh, I might have just talked to God or anything. Never. None of that stuff. Everything I got came from God given like when I was born in the book. That's it. Those two things mixed together. Whatever God gave me when I came out the womb in this book. And everything in this book is available to every single one of us. So nothing that y'all hear me talking about is like some special great thing that can't nobody attain. Nothing that you hear me talk about should be like, oh, wow. When he say nobody can talk to him, that's because he's so smart. No, I'm only telling you can't nobody talk to me like that because of what this book say. That's it. Once you can, once you, once you filter everything, you know what I'm saying? You have a, what's it called? The little thing when you cooking and you got a, you know what I'm saying? The strainer, right? You get you a strainer, right? You got you, you got you, what you, what you be putting in the strainer? You be putting like spaghetti. Yeah. Like noodle. So you got the spaghetti, you cook it on the pot. Then it got all that little cloudy crud that's all over it, whatever. What's it called? The little film and stuff. Don't nobody want to eat stuff. You know, you ain't putting that. What is that? Starch? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to put, you starch, what it do? Make you fat? Nobody want to get fat. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking at it. So you got the you got the starch, right? And then you look at it, and then you you pour it over into the strainer. And then when you put it in that strainer, it sit there, right? And what if I just pour it in the strainer, shake it a couple times, put it back in? Did I do the, did I do what I need to do? Is it good? No, you got it. Got to sit there. You got to move it around. You might got to spread some water on it, and rinse it off. No, you ain't supposed to do that. Okay, I ain't cooking. I don't be cooking. You ain't got to rinse it off. So what you do, just shake it around till it all get out? That's even better for the analogy. You know what I'm saying? So you got to shake that thing up. You got to do all this extra stuff because you got to get all of the starch off of the noodles. So now the starch goes through those little holes. But guess what can't get through? The noodles can't make it. Noodles too big. That's how the book works. The truth is going to be big. All these lies going to slip right through. Gonna slip right through. So the book could tell you, listen, this is how you shift all this stuff out. You only want to keep the stuff that's real. All these lies gonna shift right on through, gonna pass it right on, but you gotta shake these people up. Cause these people will lie to you. You use this book, you'll sift right through all that stuff. Right? You'll sift right through all that stuff. Won't even be a problem. Uh Caden probably about to call you. Right? Won't even be a problem. You'll sift right through all that stuff. And that's what it's about. 
nothing that I'm telling y'all some special thing. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to get it, but I almost want to get Moses. When he tell you, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, what I'm telling you, talk, talking about, uh, you got to get it for me, bro. Where is it at? This is... Uh, Deuteronomy is towards the end. No, nah, it ain't towards talk, the end. It's like at the beginning. Said, you talking about when he said... Uh, not so high near, that you can't get it. Yeah, the word is near to you. It's not too high to where you can't say... Yeah, that's like six, ain't it? Us. I thought it was towards the end. Somebody cheat for me. Who got a phone here? I can cheat real quick. Let me see. I thought it was like... I thought it was early. You might be right, though. It's been a while since I've seen it. Let me see. Yeah, it is. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Deuteronomy 30. It's Deuteronomy chapter 30. I don't know why I thought it was in the beginning. No, this is after he just gave them all of the spill. He ain't really have much to say after this. It Deuteronomy chapter 30. I might want what verse 13, 14. It say 14, but I don't know if that's really what I want. Uh you want 10. We'll do 10. Ten. It's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10. Watch the book say. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book. Of the law, and if you turn unto the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it. He far. said, This commandment that I command you this day is not hidden from you. So that's the same thing I'm telling you right now. The stuff I'm talking about is not hidden, it ain't something that can't nobody get to because you don't know where it is, right? Neither is it far off. Is that what he said? Yeah, he said, Neither is it far off. What else? Neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may have it and do it. Most our God in his word, it ain't it ain't in the sky where you got to say, man, I need Elon Musk to build me a SpaceX rocket so I can get to it. That's not necessary. Right. Nor is it where. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it. Right. I don't need no big, gigantic carnival cruise. You know what I'm saying? To get over to it in the sea. It's not necessary. Right. What else? But the word is very near unto thee in thy mouth and in thine heart that thou may do it. That's it. The book is right here. The word is right here only for us to do it. Right. So what I'm telling y'all ain't no strange thing, ain't no wild thing. Y'all go, listen, it's people out there that'll tell you, I am an apostle or I am a prophet or I am whatever they, they think they is. Or God told me this, or God told me to tell y'all this, or God called me to do this. I ain't saying none of that. None of that. Everything that I got is regular. Regular stuff. This stuff that's available to every one of us right in this book. So if you ever look at it and be like, man, that brother know the book or man, that brother smart or man, that brother brave or man, that bitch. This book is it. That's it. That's it. Right. Keep going. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to Ezekiel. Let's try to finish this out. Where was we at? Ezekiel what? Ezekiel. It'd be an A, right? Mm. We ate. Eight what? Eight seven. Eight seven. 817. 817? Yeah. This is Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 17. Watch the book say. We don't need nobody to go get this word for us. Right? I pre I appreciate every one of y'all sitting here, and I appreciate everybody listening in who going to listen in and all that. I do. I really appreciate it, and I enjoy being able to teach. I appreciate that y'all listen. But at the end of the day, if, if I drop off, if I end up hypocriting, if I end up doing anything, at any point, the word right there, you don't need nobody to get it for you. You open it up, you look at it, and you study it and figure it out. Most I got to send you another teacher. Right? But the word is right there. You don't need nobody to go get it. All you need, the most I got to open up your eyes to it. And that's only going to happen by reason of use. 
What is reason to use me? Put it in practice. You put it in the practice. That's it. You take a little bit that you do know, obey it. Then the next little bit you know, obey it. Then the next little bit you know, obey it until you obey the whole book. Most I got to open this whole thing up to you. Don't be out there arguing with nobody. You hear everybody out, figure it out. Then when you're comfortable with the book, then you can argue with their butt. You know what I'm saying? You can do a little arguing once you're comfortable with it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be arguing with nobody. Just listen. Okay, just tell me where it is, brother. You see it in the book? I'm going to obey what I read. I'm going to obey it the way I understand it. Keep moving. That's the recipe to success. You want a recipe to success with the most high God? That's it. Read, obey. Hear, obey. Obey what you hear in the book. Not obey what you hear Phil say. Not obey what you hear T say. Well, yeah, T reading the book. So obey what you hear T say. All right, keep going. Then he said unto me, as thou seen this, O son of man, is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, will I also deal in fury. My eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry, though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. All right, let's get nine. It's Ezekiel chapter nine. Give me verse one. We read a little bit of nine before, but I want to. I want to make sure. Oh, we might not. We might have read this on the on the fellowship call. Actually, he cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, "Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand." Right. So remember, he just showed them all these abominations in Jerusalem. Now in chapter nine, it's a continuation, right? So in chapter nine, he said, "Okay, now." Everybody who got charged over the city, do what? With a destroying weapon in his hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> and behold, six men came from the way of the hither gate, which lies toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And uh -huh. one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Right. So one man had a pink, uh, uh, not a pink, uh, a pen in his hand. You know what I'm saying? Something to write with in his hand. Right. Clothed with linen. Watch this. The glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And what did he say to him? And behold, the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that have been done in the midst thereof. Right? So he said, listen, go to everybody who knew about these abominations, and they sighed and cried about it. Like, man, why do you people got a hypocrite like this? They was upset about it. It hurt them to see all this foolishness going, going around in the city of the Most High God. Right? <laughs> what are you going to do when you see those people, men dressed in linen? And to the oh, and go through and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right. So then he went to all those people, this man dressed in men, linen with a pen in his hand. He went to all these people and he put a mark on their forehead. Right. And that mark. All right. Let me see here. According to Ezekiel. Right. That mark. When we read that word, this is the letter. It's just one letter, right? That letter, that, that letter that looked like a T right there, you know what I'm saying? That letter is actually a ta, but the meaning of the letter is mark. That is the word that's used there, right? So usually you might like, like, what's a word that only has one letter? A. A, what's another one? I, what's another one? That might be it, huh? You gotta have another one, right? Is that that's it? A and I, that's the only ones. Okay, we'll go with I, right? So you go with I. When you see an I there, I is a letter. But at the same time, I means me. Right? So that's the same thing with this one, right? This was used here and translated as mark. That's how they translated it. But when you, if you read it in Hebrew, it says, put that on the people. 
That's why we use it here. Right? Some people think that's a darn cross that we put up there. You know what I'm saying? Silly darn butts. You know what I'm saying? They think I got a cross. You know what I'm saying? I put it on the shoe. They think I'm walking around with a darn cross. Like, oh, that's, you know what I'm saying? So your cross kind of crooked. I'll slap you in your darn mouth. Ain't no darn cross. It ain't crooked. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, and it's like, that's the mark that he said I'll put on these people. He said, I will put that on them. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Play utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Right? Then so then he told him, go kill everybody. But don't you touch or even come near any person who had that mark. Right? Because he said he's going to put it on their forehead. Right. So now when you see Christians. It's about to come up, ain't it? I think what they start, they be starting early. They be starting in March. I think they do 40 days before uh, Easter. What they be doing, they take the lint out of their arm pockets, the dirty lint, and they rub it right there. You know what I'm saying? That's why they call it lint. They get the dirty lint out their thing. They put it because, you know, they don't wash their clothes, white folks. They took they put the darn. Dirty lint out they thing, and they put it right here and make a darn cross out of it, and they think they doing something. Like they think, they think, man, my fingernails black when I put that lint on mine. We good. You know what I'm talking about? That thing is solid. You know what I'm saying? And they walk around, so y'all see them every now and again. Next time, y'all ain't y'all probably never noticed this in y'all life, but now you gonna walk around, you gonna see somebody with a black lint cross on their head, and you gonna be like, that's what Uncle Phil was talking about. Bro, That's the first one. time, the first time I saw that, it creeped me out, bro. I was terrified. I was like, "This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen," because it was like right after, right after I saw your cousin did that. The Bible. Oh, I thought you said your cousin. That did day, that day, I'm to say, tell him come here. Me. I'll that make fun of him live camera. What'd you say, bro? Sorry. I said that was right after I started to understand the Bible when I first saw that. That thing was like super scary looking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't never saw. I didn't see that thing before I knew the book. Oh, I saw it after I knew the book. I'm looking like that's what I'm saying. I've never heard nobody doing no foolishness like this. Yeah, that was after we started reading, after we started to understand. Uh, we was at Applebee's or something like that, and like almost everybody had like a couple tables had that thing on. I thought it was some new stuff until I looked it up. I looked it up. Oh, no, these people been doing this thing for years. I ain't never seen no foolishness like this. I think, wow. I think that's how they go. You know what I'm saying? They put the black cross on there. That thing crazy. What is it? What is it? What is it made of? What kind of soot? So they actually burn something and put it on there? How you how you prepare it though? Or act like you ain't no expert. You know. You put the black stuff on your forehead? I wasn't. Oh, that's crazy. You don't even know who you married to no more. You know what I'm talking about? What? You had it as a kid or as an adult? You didn't do it as an adult. That's crazy. You have to do it only on Wednesdays. But it ain't it every week on Wednesday? Yes. So Wednesday come, it's just like Don't they like give up? Where you get the ass people? from? Oh, he hit you with one of these. He say a prayer when he do it. <laughs> Mel says Simba. <laughs> These people are crazy. They made my wife. See, now I'm mad. You made my wife? You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I'm about to go see me a Catholic. That's crazy. Don't nobody make my wife do the Simba. That's crazy. Don't they stop eating bread or something like that? Oh, yeah. You got to give up some type of food. Yeah, you gotta give up. You gotta give up some type of, you know what I'm saying? Something. Y'all always did rice, or y'all switch it up sometimes? That's cheating. That's cheating. Real <laughs> Christian gotta switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Real Christian. Real Christian. Next year, you gotta switch it up. Catholics is Christians. 
Not to see, Catholics don't even mess with the rest of the Christian. Catholics, they gotta be like, we a different, you know what I'm saying? We a different level, you know what I'm saying? Like a different, ain't what other Christian you seen putting darn soot on their darn forehead? You've never seen nothing like that on another Christian. We ain't never seen that in a black church. We, we you know, black people probably gotta go get white soot or something, you know what I'm saying? That thing ain't gonna, you know, that thing, that thing don't get the, they don't have the same effect, you know what I'm saying? You put it on there, it'd be like, man, what's that on your forehead, bro? Somebody hit you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody, somebody, is that a scab? You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't got the same effect. You put it on us. Oh, yeah, no. Nah, Catholics don't do none of that food. The Catholics stand up. Mm, I, I'm one God. Mm, I, I, and they all drink out of the same cup. They nasty butts pass it. That's nasty. Yeah, some nasty. That was some nasty butts. Yuck. You know what I'm saying? But Catholic, nasty Catholicism is like super easy to like. It's like it's not even fair. Like everything y'all do not in the Bible. Y'all, it's way too easy to get y'all. Yeah, you could pick you could pick thoughts of them off. Yeah. Everything about it is against what the book says. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like it's it's like a joke. It's crazy that that's one of the most popular ones. But that thing is like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it just shows you, it just shows you where the people are. Told you where the people are. They got you worshiping Mary and stuff. These people are crazy. Where are we at? Keep going. Let's try to finish out chapter nine. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them as, it, as, a, as I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel, Israel and thou pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem, mm -hmm. then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord has forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. As for me also, mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. That's it? Yeah. Well, I thought something else was in there. But yeah, he, he recorded the matter and said, I have done as thou command me, can't have commanded me. So he marked everybody. Then the other ones, the other angels came and killed everybody that didn't have a mark. But guess where they started? Books say they started at the sanctuary. They started at the temple. Right? That is a mission. That when, when We don't have to get it, but when Paul talked to us, Paul said, judgment will come to who first? Hebrew, the Jew and the Gentile. He said to the Jew first, first and then to the Gentile. So the same thing is said here. He's starting closest at the temple. When Yahushua popped up, where did he start? In Jerusalem. He yeah. started at Jerusalem. And then he told the disciples to start where? In Jerusalem. At Jerusalem, and then go out to all the world. Whether it's good or it's bad, it start with us. That is how fairness works. Most high God say, when it come time to kill folk, guess who gonna get it first? So when the most we we were brought in first for the Most High. Most High God gave His word to us. We were the only nation, and who was the only nation that got done like us? Because the glory come to us first, but the punishment do too. And once he get us out the way, guess what we got to get next? So that's what, when we hear about the end of the world and we hear all this stuff, you know what? I say end of the world, right? And I imagine, like, if there's people that don't believe the Bible who listen or hear stuff and hear me talking about end of the world, I'm like, oh, they probably roll their eyes, right? That's how I imagine it. But then I be listening to the news and I be listening to these people talk. They be looking like climate change. The world is going to look drastically different just 50 years. And if we don't get it corrected in X amount of times, I mean, we're looking at more rapid tornado, more volcanoes, more of this. I mean, the world as we know it, we're dealing with extinction is what they be saying. I'm looking like, what? <laughs> but I sound crazy when I tell y'all what's written in this book and all this stuff been coming true. 
But y'all been talking about this same stuff for years. And every time there's a tornado, y'all say, we've never seen a tornado like it. I'm reading about tornadoes in my book. But they want us to make believe that if we don't stop driving cars and flying an airplane, that the world is going in. Because guess what? We putting out too much carbon into the world is what they tell us. Tell us anything. And then meanwhile, a volcano erupts and do the little carbon that we put out all year, it do that in a couple minutes. So it's like, hold on, how the world been surviving volcanoes erupting all the time, constantly, right? Volcanoes always erupting everywhere. You know what I'm saying? There's the whole, they say it's been around for billions of years. The whole billions of years, y'all say this earth been here, volcanoes been erupting. Nevertheless, we here. they tell us anything. They will tell us anything. They will say anything. They'll have us but it's all manipulation. It's all manipulation. I'm still trying to figure out the climate change manipulation. I'm trying to figure out what's the play there. I'd be looking like, man, all y'all got a lot of people on this thing talking about global warming and all this stuff. What is the scam? I might want to be in on it. You know what I'm saying? This might be, it might be some money behind that thing. Like, who I need to invest in? You know what I'm saying? Good goodness gracious, these boys is all over. Keep going. All right, that's the end. That's the end of nine, right? Mm hmm. All right, we ain't gonna touch ten. We'll we'll pick up ten next time. Any questions? Any questions in the chat? These people, these people used to have me darn going. I don't like that either. You one thing I don't like. I don't like nobody manipulating me. That thing mm, I get under my skin. You know what I mean? When you feel got. When somebody got you, I be looking like, I hate it. Mm -mm. Verse 10, is there a reward coming? Go to verse 10 for me real quick. Let me see what it says. And as for me also, my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way up on their head. That's not a reward. If that, I don't know if that's what you're talking about, uh, Sister Pamela, but if that's what you're talking about, that's not a reward. That's, the, that's, that's punishment he's talking about. Is that the verse you're talking about, Sister Pamela? That boy type hard, don't he? That boy be click, 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 click. Goodness ah, gracious. That's funny. <laughs> a recompense is like revenge. Or like you get what yeah, you I'm talking about the recompense. Yeah, no, yeah. That that uh in that like, context, usually when the book say recompense, it's not talking about something good. Yeah. I can't. I at least I I can't think of I can't think of nothing right now where the, where recompense is used to talk about. So I think it. I think the English word could be used to talk about some uh, positive, but I'm having a hard time thinking of a verse right now it's that kind of like it's kind of like reap what you sow. You know what I mean? Or yeah. you're gonna get what you deserve. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when I recompense. Your way on your head is like saying all the evil that you did, all that's come. I'm, 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 I'm about to hit you over the head with the punishment. You know what I'm saying? So like you getting what you deserve, or this is your reward for the evil that you've done. Yeah, that's what these people are called karma. Yeah, yeah. Our stuff, our stuff, our stuff work a little different because it, it slide out from one person. You know what I'm saying? It slide out from one man, from God. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, read what you saw is the con the concept. Any other questions? All right, well, let's pray out. Yeah. Mm hmm.